Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you're joining me today. I'm gonna to be sharing some tips on how I work in engagement sessions slash wedding shoot, the things that I say to my couples, the poses that I might do, and just little tips and tricks that should help you during your next session. So stay tuned and we'll get right into it. And if you're new to my channel, I'm a fine art wedding photographer based in Toronto, Canada. I do workshops, I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring, I have online courses, so I'll make sure to link all of that below and you guys can check it out. Let's get into today's video. about 20 tips that I'm gonna go through. So I'll start with number one. So number one is to praise your clients. I know that when I had my engagement session back uh, two years ago now, it was really helpful when the photographer told us how good we looked, what we were doing right, how amazing the photos were turning out. It gave us that confidence that we knew we looked good and that the photos were turning out. When I work with my own clients, I use a lot of different phrases. So I try not to stick with just the one, oh, that's beautiful or gorgeous. I do say that quite often, I can't lie, but I am trying to get better at memorizing phrases that sound genuine. So that way when we do the session, it just comes out naturally. So some phrases could be, have you done this before? Wow, you guys look like models. And one of my favorites, oh my gosh, this could be on a magazine cover. And I know it sounds funny saying these right now, but when I say them with my couples, it makes them laugh, it makes them giggle, um, and they can tell that I sound genuine, that I'm really loving how they look, I'm loving how everything looks in the photograph, um, and it gives them that confidence to be more of themselves, to just be natural, to have fun together, um, and it just kind of sets the vibe for the photo shoot. I know there's been some times when I've accidentally done the opposite, when I've set them in a pose and I haven't loved it and they can tell that I don't love it by just my reaction and by my words. Um, so I try to be really careful of that, that I don't let them know how I'm feeling. I want them to always feel like any pose I put them in, they look amazing. And so if I set them up in a pose and it doesn't look the best, I'll still take a few shots and then I'll just move on to the next pose. But I don't necessarily need to tell them how that post turned out or um, or that it didn't work out. It's better just to tell them that they look amazing and that way they won't lose that confidence during your photo shoot. Number two is to ask questions. So whenever I'm starting the session with my couple, I make sure to ask some questions. So if this is an engagement session, I try to ask some questions about the wedding. I ask them if they've chosen a florist yet or which vendors they're still deciding on or what their color palette's gonna be. I kind of just like to ask them a lot of questions about the wedding because I know as a former bride, it was so exciting getting to talk about my wedding, getting to talk about the vision behind it. And it's also important for you to know as a photographer what the wedding day is gonna be like. Or if it's on the wedding day, I'll ask some questions like, how does it feel to be married now? Or how are you feeling? How's the day going? Are you guys enjoying yourselves? I just like to ask some questions related to the wedding day, um, get them thinking about themselves, about their love for each other. That really creates for some beautiful and natural photographs. So the more questions, the better. And also don't be afraid to talk about yourself as well. So if they're sharing something and it's relatable to you and it's a positive story, I like to share those stories as well. Number three is to keep it flowing. So during my sessions, I'm always using the transition shot. So when we're moving from one spot to another spot, I'll use those in between moments to get some walking shots. So I don't just walk with them and I don't shoot anything. I mean, there are times where I definitely do take a break and it's better to talk with them, but I really do try to use each transition moment to get those shots. So I'll have them walk in front and I'll say, okay, you guys just walk ahead and I'm gonna stay behind. I'm gonna take some shots from behind. And then I'll get them to go in for a kiss or I'll get them to do something cute or look back at the camera. Um, but I'm always trying to take advantage of those in-between moments because sometimes on wedding days, we're moving so quickly um, that every shot really counts. And if you can get more, the better. Number four is don't take a thousand shots. So I know, especially as we're just starting out, it's very easy to just take a thousand shots, maybe of the same pose, of the same angle. 
but really try to force yourself as you become better and you know that your shots are in focus and that you're using a good camera try to focus on just taking a few shots and then changing up the pose and changing up the location. I know it's easy to kind of get stuck in the same pose and you really want to make sure you get the shot so you're taking a thousand, but as you do more sessions, you need to learn how to trust yourself and also to know your camera. So there was some time for me when I was using equipment that I couldn't fully rely on. It wasn't always pin sharp. So then I would make sure to take a bunch just to make sure I got it in focus. But now that I know my camera gear and I have some high quality camera gear, I can trust that if I just take one or five of the same shots that one of those will turn out. And then I can move on to the next pose and get more variety. I think it's also easy to get stuck in shooting in one spot because the lighting is amazing. And I was kind of taught that as well, that if you find a good spot on a wedding day, just shoot all the photos in it. And sometimes that is the case when there really is no other option. But for the most part, now I really try to pick other spots that will work as well, even if there is some direct sunlight. I know how to make it work now, and that does come with experience, and shooting film does help that as well, since film captures the highlights really beautifully. So if you're shooting in mid-sun with film, it will still turn out really nicely, whereas I know digital can be a hit or a miss sometimes. But definitely don't be afraid of shooting in direct sunlight and getting that variety because a couple doesn't want to see all the same shots in one spot from their wedding day. They chose that venue, they chose that location for a reason. So even if you're getting those transition shots um, that have full sun, but you're showing off the scenery, you're showing off the venue, they're gonna really appreciate those shots. Number five is carry inspiration. So even now with every wedding that I go to, I always bring five different poses that I haven't tried before or that inspire me. So I'll either print those out and I'll have them on a piece of paper or I'll just have them on my phone so that way they're always with me. I know some photographers will actually take the pictures of the inspiration with their camera and so that way they'll have the images already on their camera and it doesn't look like they're looking at inspiration so the couple wouldn't know. But for me personally, I don't mind. I'll even share with the couple sometimes like, oh, just one second, there was a pose that I really wanted to try. And I know that my couples actually really appreciate that because it shows that I'm constantly being creative, um, that I'm trying new things and that they're gonna get some amazing pictures for their day. Number six, start every spot with a traditional pose. So every time I'm moving my couple around, whether that's on a wedding day or an engagement session, I always try to get the same shot of them looking at the camera first. So we'll typically move to a different spot. I'll have them stand there, put them in the pose, but they're usually looking at the camera. Once I've got that main shot, then we'll go ahead and try some different poses and we'll get more creative. But I really wanna make sure, especially for the wedding day, that I am getting multiple shots of them looking at the camera because those are shots that mom and dad like, grandma and grandpa like. They're just kind of the family favorites in a very traditional pose. At an engagement session, I don't need to do as many looking at the cameras because the session is more for themselves. But on a wedding day, I really try to make sure to start every new location that we go to with that pose and then transition out of that pose. Number seven is flattering angles. So when I'm shooting the engagement session or if I'm meeting the couple for the first time on the wedding day, I always ask them what their favorite angle is to be photographed from. Because some people, especially me, I like being photographed on my left side more than my right side. So that's something that I need to communicate with my photographer. But as photographers, we need to know to ask those questions because some of our couples have no idea. They might forget to tell you which side they photographed on or maybe they didn't think of it. So it's really great to ask that at the engagement session if you can. And that way when they get the photos back, they can kind of let you know, oh, we actually liked both sides or no, I really only liked my left side. So it's important to ask them that question. Also, you wanna make sure that you never have the hips pointed straight at the camera. So even when I have the couple pointed straight at the camera, I'll typically have the girl turn her hips away from the camera, but her face can still be in line with the camera. But by doing that, the hips don't appear to be as big as they are, and it will give you a more flattering curve with her body. And I'll make sure to share some examples of what I mean by that. You also wanna make sure that the arm is always separated from the body. So even with the guys or the girls, I always like to have some separation. So when the guys go to put their hands in their pockets, sometimes they'll come in really close, they'll have their hands right next to their body, but I always let them know, 
Maybe it'll feel a bit awkward, but make sure you have that separation with your body and that will make them look more confident as they stand there. And it also creates for a more flattering pose. Number eight is start wide and then move closer. So I'm always starting far away from the couple and then I'll slowly move in getting the different crops. So I'll get their full bodies and then I'll get a waist shot and then I'll come in and get their faces really close. But I like to make sure that I am getting the variety, that I am getting the far shot and then I'm getting close up shots. I know it's very easy to focus on one or the other. So by starting my sessions off like that, I'm already in the zone and I get into that pattern of starting far back for each new pose and then coming in close to get the tight shot of that pose. I also think it's important to get far back shots with the landscape in it. So a lot of my sessions, I try to get the couple really small in the frame and then I'll have the landscape filling up most of the frame. I think this is a really beautiful shot. Couples love it. It's really nice because it's one that you can hang in your home and people might not even know it's you at first. Um, so I try to get one of those shots at each of my sessions. Number nine is beware of claw hands. So a lot of people, especially if they're nervous, they'll tend to have like more claw hands. So when you say, oh, put your hand on his chest or put your hand on his arm, they'll kind of grab it or just have like weird fingers. So I always make sure that my couples have soft and delicate looking hands. So I'll even go over and position their fingers the way I want them, or I'll just tell them to soften up their hands, just relax their hands and just think soft and delicate. It's really the small details that make the photograph. So even though you think that maybe hands aren't the center of the photograph or they're not the most important, every little detail that goes into the image is what makes it beautiful. So you wanna make sure that their hands look beautiful, that their faces look beautiful, and that's what will really make you a good photographer is when you start noticing those little details. Number 10 is be careful of objects coming out of the head. So when you're in a location where there's a lot of trees or maybe it's an industrial area where there's poles or different things, you wanna make sure that you never have them growing out of the couple's head because that'll look really funny. And it's something that can be really subtle sometimes, so you might not even notice it. But then when you see the picture blown up really big, it becomes really obvious. So make sure that you're always looking at the whole composition. You're seeing what's happening in the background. You're making sure that it's not too busy of a background. And if you are, make sure to have that shallow depth of field. But you really wanna make sure there's no objects coming out of them or just anything looking weird because those things are a lot harder to edit out afterwards. Number 11 is awkward crops. So just be careful of your cropping. Make sure you aren't cropping at the ankle or at the wrist. Even when they're in closer and you're showing maybe their waist up, you don't wanna cut off their hand right at their waist right here. At that point, you'd wanna crop maybe up here or even closer to the elbow. But you just wanna be aware of those awkward crops where all of a sudden it looks like they're missing an arm or a foot. Number 12 is kind of a funny one, but I always try to make sure the girl's face is in front, specifically her nose. So when they're going in for a kissing shot, I'm getting in really nice and close. Typically I'll tell the girl to put her face in front or her nose in front and it just looks a bit better because most guys obviously have bigger noses than girls. Um, so if you have the girl's face in front, it just tends to look more delicate, more romantic um, and overall I think they'll both like that image better. Now I don't always do that for every shot but there are a few where I make sure to get her nose in front um, but I still don't wanna take attention away from the guy so I'll still get shots of him looking at her just on his own. It's important that we don't just focus on the girl most of the time. I do like to give attention to the guys. Maybe a shot of him kissing her hand is really nice and that way I can just focus on his face and then she's kind of in the background. You wanna make sure that you're getting a mix of both of them. Number 13 is picking up shots. So when I do a picking up shot and maybe the guy is holding the girl like this, I always make sure to have them turn away from the camera. I might get one or two shots of them like this facing the camera, but I just find it more romantic and more storytelling for them to be kind of facing the other direction and look like they're walking away. It gives that end of story kind of feel where it's ending off the night or it's ending off the session and they're walking away into the sunset. I also just find that it's more flattering for the girl because now her hips and her legs are just pointed towards the camera. And if you know this, whatever is closest to the camera is gonna look the biggest. As my hands get closer, you can see that they look bigger, even though that they are small and normal sized. So if you have the girl's hips in front and closest to the camera, 
um, then it won't be as flattering for her. So that's why I like having them both turned away and then they can kind of tuck their heads together and look at each other and go in for a kiss. And it's a really romantic pose. Number 14 is make sure to give direction and try different phrases with your couples. So I have some like go-to phrases that I like to use, which are tickle your noses, give her a kiss on the cheek or on the forehead. I like to do a lot of that where I say give her a kiss on the cheek or the forehead. Those usually create for some really beautiful photographs. Snuggle in real close, go ahead and cuddle. Just embrace. I love saying that in a session, just embrace. And that gives them the moment to just be themselves and to just have a moment between themselves. And I will also say that as well as have a moment between yourselves and that way they cannot focus on me and they can just look at each other and this usually comes towards the end of the session when they are more relaxed and they are just enjoying themselves and, and having fun. Having these go-to phrases will again add to the flow of the session where it just feels natural, um, you're not getting stuck or getting lost for creativity. It really helps to keep the flow within the session. Number 15 is delicate face touches. So I love getting my couples nice and close and then I'll get him to put his hand on her cheek, maybe pull her in for a kiss, and I'll get a shot of her doing the same thing, pulling him in for a kiss. I think those shots where their hands are on each other's faces, um, the hand underneath the chin, it's really romantic, really soft, and it adds to the overall feel of the photograph. Number 16, make sure to capture the details. So when I'm doing a session, I'm not just focusing on the couple, I'm also photographing the details, making sure to get shots of her ring, um, getting shots of their hands around each other, just focused on the hands, or getting shots of their feet, maybe if they're running, or you're getting a low angle of their feet. I think those shots really add to the story and really make the gallery beautiful as a whole. Adding in landscape shots is important too, not even just on the wedding day, but during an engagement session, it's so nice to capture the scenery surrounding the couple, and that way they have those photos and those memories to cherish as well. Number 17, the less gear, the better. So when I'm shooting a engagement session or even on the wedding day for the bride and groom portraits, I really try to stick with one camera. So now because I shoot film and I shoot digital, at an engagement session, I might just shoot fully film and I'll shoot with my 80 millimeter on my contacts. And then I might have my digital on one side just to get a backup of that as well. But I find it really helpful if I'm just shooting with one camera that I know inside and out. And that way I can really focus on the couple. I'm not getting caught up in the lenses or what I'm using or the technical aspect of everything. I know my camera inside and out and then I can just really focus on the client. I can interact with them. I can ask them questions and I'm not having the other side of my brain thinking about everything else. So if you can gear down, that's better. Just try to stick to one lens or maybe two lenses, but usually one lens is best. Number 18 is a tip for the guys. So whether that's the engagement or the wedding, I always make sure that the guy doesn't have their hands fully in the pockets because some guys they'll put their whole hands in their pockets and it just doesn't look good. It just creates this bulky looking feeling when their hands are fully in their pockets. So I try to have them have a thumb out, that way it forces them not to put their whole hand in their pocket or I'll just have them pull out their hands a little bit and that way um, their elbows again can be separated from their body and it's not tucked in this close. It's little details like that that will just help the groom, help the guy look better and he'll end up loving the photos a lot more too. It might even be things that he didn't realize but then after he sees the photos, he's gonna be so grateful that they hired you um, and that they have your expertise. Okay, and lastly, get them to talk about each other. So during a session, I love getting them to talk about each other, asking them questions like, who said I love you first? Or what do you guys enjoy doing together? Or what do you really love about her? Or what do you really love about him? Trying to get them engaged with each other and just get those feelings going. Maybe they don't hear from the other person as much, those little qualities that they love. So it's kind of nice that I can navigate that and get them talking about each other um, and really capture those beautiful emotions that come from those questions. Again, you want to navigate your shoot all around um, your relationship with the couple. So if you can sense that they are a little closed off, then I wouldn't dive into those questions right away. I would start with just easier questions about the wedding day or about their bridesmaids. Um, and then I would work towards maybe the deeper questions. Well, that's it guys. I hope that this video was helpful for you and I hope that you learned some new tips that you can practice and use at your own sessions. 
Um, I know we have a few months until we can shoot again, so it's good to start thinking about these tips now and start visualizing these tips in your head as well. Every session before I go into the session, I like to visualize the poses that I'm going to use for my couples, the type of language that I'm going to use, and that really helps me get into the zone. So when I show up at those sessions, I already know what I'm going to say, how I'm going to feel, um, the type of photos I'm going to take. So if you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn your notifications on. I'm going to be putting out more videos like this every week and if there's any topics or anything specific that you would like me to cover, make sure to put that in the comments below and I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you in the next video.